Marshal Dadajura. Chapter 131 Emperor Tung Qing Family So the Azure province is originated from this Qing family? Chu Feng asked. That's right. The names of the nine provinces are taken from the nine martial cultivating families. The nine powerful families had equal strength and they all occupied one province each and formed the situation in which no one attacked each other. That was maintained for roughly 200 years, but it was all changed by one unforeseen event, Sume said. Unforeseen event? What event? Chu Feng was increasingly curious. On that year, a boy was born into the Qing family. On the day that the boy was born, golden, colorful light engulfed the entire sky. For enormous beasts surged and roared midair and they shook the entire continent. That boy was naturally intelligent. According to the legends, one month after he was born, he could speak. On the second month, he could stand up and walk. When he was one year old, he started to learn the four arts. He was familiar with all the ancient books in the world at the age of five. Sume said. There was such a child prodigy? Chu Feng was shocked. That speed of growth really surpassed the cognition of normal people. That wasn't even much. The most important part was when that boy was seven years old, the bones in his body were at their best and they were equivalent to the physique of twelve-year-old normal children. So, when he was seven years old, he started martial cultivation. The most scary thing was that he was also extremely impressive in martial cultivation. He entered the origin realm when he was nine years old, profound realm when he was eleven years old, and heaven realm when he was thirteen years old. He swept across the nine provinces and made the Qing family the overlord of the nine provinces. He was that strong? Entering the heaven realm at the age of thirteen, swept through the nine provinces and united the continent? Chu Feng was shocked again. Up until now, the heaven realm was the known peak of martial cultivation. It was quite terrifying when that person entered it at the age of thirteen. Chu Feng was fifteen years old this year and with the cultivation of the eighth level of the spirit realm, he was already viewed as a genius by many people. To enter the heaven realm at the age of thirteen was too impressive. Even Chu Feng was quite stunned because when compared to that person, he was simply as ordinary as he could be. Strong? The strong part hasn't even come yet. When he was fifteen years old, he entered a completely new world of martial cultivation. A completely new world of martial cultivation? He had might that was like a lord's arrival to the world and power that could move mountains and fill oceans. With a wave of his hand, he could destroy any city and he could slaughter living things like stepping on ants. He was the true lord of the world and he ruled the fates of all. So, people called those who were in that realm as martial lords. Martial lord? So after the heaven realm, there's still a martial lord realm? Chu Feng was quite astonished and he couldn't help but ask, who is that person called? He is called King Swanchen. Sume replied. King Swanchen. Chu Feng deeply remembered that name because he had to remember such a character. A true genius. A true influential person. King Swanchen is the strongest person that appeared in the continent of the nine provinces. However, because that matter happened too long ago and many changes occurred to the nine provinces, very little people know about it now. However, the strangest thing is that just after King Swanchen became a martial lord, he suddenly disappeared. There were many thoughts on why he disappeared. Some people said he left because the continent of the nine provinces could not contain him anymore. Some people also said that his martial cultivation went against the heavens and broke the rules of martial principles. From that, he received the punishment of the heavens and died on the year that he became a martial lord. Up until now, that was the most reasonable way of death, that people said. Is he really dead? Such a strong person died just like that? Chu Feng did not really believe it. How could such a strong person die because someone said so? He did indeed die. According to legends, he knew that he didn't have much time left so before death, he created a tomb for himself. 
The tomb ran through half of the Azure province, and he set up four entrances. The names of the four entrances are called Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Vermilion Bird, and Black Tortoise. These four entrances, is it? Chu Feng was enlightened. At that instant, he suddenly understood that the two evil tombs in the Azure Dragon Mountain Range and the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range were possibly interconnected. However, there were two more places. It meant that there were two more evil tombs within the Azure Province. That's right. One of the entrances is in the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range of the Vermilion Bird City. Other than that, there's also the Azure Dragon Mountain Range of the Azure Dragon School the White Tiger Mountain Range of the White Tiger Villa, and the Black Tortoise Mountain Range of the Black Tortoise City. Gong Luyun's family is the overlord of the Black Tortoise City right now. Sume explained. That means that Gong Luyun and you two sisters went to the Azure Dragon School for King Swanchen's tomb? King Swanchen's tomb has many layers of mechanisms, and it is not something that we can open. However, my Su family always felt that the reason why the Azure Dragon founder could become the number one person in the continent a thousand years ago was because he opened the tomb of King Swanchen and got some benefits from it. When he left the mountain, he was known as the Azure Dragon founder. After being successful in his martial cultivation, he created the Azure Dragon School at the Azure Dragon Mountain Range. It was very possibly a type of gratitude towards King Swanchen. Although the Azure Dragon School declined quite a bit, that is because the absolute technique that the Azure Dragon founder used that year was not passed down. However, it's very possible that it is still within the Azure Dragon School. This is the reason why me and my sister entered the Azure Dragon School. As for Gong Luyun, his Gong family is occupying the Black Tortoise City at all costs so I'm sure he must know something about this and is staying in the Azure Dragon School for the same reasons as us. Sume spoke the truth. So it's like this. Chu Feng, who knew the truth, was endlessly excited. He never would have thought that there were four more evil tombs within the Azure province. He was unable to explore the Azure Dragon Mountain Range and the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range, but it did not mean that he could not explore the two other evil tombs. After all, he did gain some benefits in the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range, so perhaps he could get even better benefits in the other two tombs. This is a secret that cannot be spread. If the Lingyan School or the Chilean Prince Mansion knows about it, a crisis will certainly be stirred up. It may even affect the Jiang Dynasty. If that huge monster knows about this, I'm afraid they would instantly start moving and at that time, we wouldn't get any benefits at all. Sume reminded solemnly. Don't worry. I will not tell anyone else about this. Chu Feng raised his hand to promise, then chuckled and said, On the other hand, you have really fallen for me to tell me a secret like this right? You, shameless. Who would like you? After Chu Feng said that, Su Mei's small face instantly reddened and even her white, soft neck became red. She pushed open the doors and ran out, then pointed at Chu Feng and said, This is your room. If there's nothing, don't run around everywhere. Hee hee, this girl really likes having a red face. Seeing the departing back of Su Mei, Chu Feng chuckled and said, Idiot. You've gotten really lucky this time. Just at that time, Eggie's pleasant voice rang out and he could hear that she was extremely excited. I know. There's two more evil tombs for exploration, right? Chu Feng smiled. Ha. Huh. You know nothing. How can an evil tomb be as large as to run through half of the Azure province? Eggie said disdainfully. Your meaning is? If these four evil tombs really are one, it would certainly not be evil tombs. They would be emperor tombs. 630485BFB98C9622D6C69 Chapter 131 Emperor Tomb Qing Family? So the Azure Province is originated from this Qing family? Chu Feng asked. That's right. The names of the nine provinces are taken from the nine martial cultivating families. The nine powerful families had equal strength and they all occupied one province each and formed the situation in which no one attacked each other. That was maintained for roughly 200 years, 
but it was all changed by one unforeseen event, Sume said. Unforeseen event? What event? Chu Feng was increasingly curious. On that year, a boy was born into the Qing family. On the day that the boy was born, golden, colorful light engulfed the entire sky. For enormous beasts surged and roared midair and they shook the entire continent. That boy was naturally intelligent. According to the legends, one month after he was born, he could speak. On the second month, he could stand up and walk. When he was one year old, he started to learn the four arts. He was familiar with all the ancient books in the world at the age of five. Sume said. There was such a child prodigy? Chu Feng was shocked. That speed of growth really surpassed the cognition of normal people. That wasn't even much. The most important part was when that boy was seven years old, the bones in his body were at their best and they were equivalent to the physique of twelve-year-old normal children. So, when he was seven years old, he started martial cultivation. The most scary thing was that he was also extremely impressive in martial cultivation. He entered the origin realm when he was nine years old, profound realm when he was eleven years old, and heaven realm when he was thirteen years old. He swept across the nine provinces and made the Qing family the overlord of the nine provinces. He was that strong? Entering the heaven realm at the age of thirteen, swept through the nine provinces and united the continent? Chu Feng was shocked again. Up until now, the heaven realm was the known peak of martial cultivation. It was quite terrifying when that person entered it at the age of thirteen. Chu Feng was fifteen years old this year and with the cultivation of the eighth level of the spirit realm, he was already viewed as a genius by many people. To enter the heaven realm at the age of thirteen was too impressive. Even Chu Feng was quite stunned because when compared to that person, he was simply as ordinary as he could be. Strong? The strong part hasn't even come yet. When he was fifteen years old, he entered a completely new world of martial cultivation. A completely new world of martial cultivation? He had might that was like a lord's arrival to the world and power that could move mountains and fill oceans. With a wave of his hand, he could destroy any city and he could slaughter living things like stepping on ants. He was the true lord of the world and he ruled the fates of all. So, people called those who were in that realm as martial lords. Martial lord? So after the heaven realm, there's still a martial lord realm? Chu Feng was quite astonished and he couldn't help but ask, who is that person called? He is called King Swanchen. Sume replied. King Swanchen. Chu Feng deeply remembered that name because he had to remember such a character. A true genius. A true influential person. King Swanchen is the strongest person that appeared in the continent of the nine provinces. However, because that matter happened too long ago and many changes occurred to the nine provinces, very little people know about it now. However, the strangest thing is that just after King Swanchen became a martial lord, he suddenly disappeared. There were many thoughts on why he disappeared. Some people said he left because the continent of the nine provinces could not contain him anymore. Some people also said that his martial cultivation went against the heavens and broke the rules of martial principles. From that, he received the punishment of the heavens and died on the year that he became a martial lord. Up until now, that was the most reasonable way of death, that people said. Is he really dead? Such a strong person died just like that? Chu Feng did not really believe it. How could such a strong person die because someone said so? He did indeed die. According to legends, he knew that he didn't have much time left so before death, he created a tomb for himself. The tomb ran through half of the Azure province and he set up four entrances. The names of the four entrances are called Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Vermilion Bird and Black Tortoise. These four entrances, is it? Chu Feng was enlightened. At that instant, he suddenly understood that the two evil tombs in the Azure Dragon Mountain Range and the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range were possibly interconnected. However, there were two more places. It meant that there were two more evil tombs within the Azure province. 
that's right. One of the entrances is in the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range of the Vermilion Bird City. Other than that, there's also the Azure Dragon Mountain Range of the Azure Dragon School, the White Tiger Mountain Range of the White Tiger Villa, and the Black Tortoise Mountain Range of the Black Tortoise City. Gong Luyun's family is the overlord of the Black Tortoise City right now. Sume explained. That means that Gong Luyun and you two sisters went to the Azure Dragon School for King Swanchen's tomb? King Swanchen's tomb has many layers of mechanisms and it is not something that we can open. However, my Su family always felt that the reason why the Azure Dragon founder could become the number one person in the continent a thousand years ago was because he opened the tomb of King Swanchen and got some benefits from it. When he left the mountain, he was known as the Azure Dragon founder. After being successful in his martial cultivation, he created the Azure Dragon School at the Azure Dragon Mountain Range. It was very possibly a type of gratitude towards King Swanchen. Although the Azure Dragon School declined quite a bit, that is because the absolute technique that the Azure Dragon founder used that year was not passed down. However, it's very possible that it is still within the Azure Dragon School. This is the reason why me and my sister entered the Azure Dragon School. As for Gong Luyun, his Gong family is occupying the Black Tortoise City at all costs so I'm sure he must know something about this and is staying in the Azure Dragon School for the same reasons as us. Sume spoke the truth. So it's like this. Chu Feng, who knew the truth, was endlessly excited. He never would have thought that there were four more evil tombs within the Azure province. He was unable to explore the Azure Dragon Mountain Range and the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range, but it did not mean that he could not explore the two other evil tombs. After all, he did gain some benefits in the Vermilion Bird Mountain Range so perhaps he could get even better benefits in the other two tombs. This is a secret that cannot be spread. If the Lingyun School or the Chilin Prince Mansion knows about it, a crisis will certainly be stirred up. It may even affect the Jiang Dynasty. If that huge monster knows about this, I'm afraid they would instantly start moving and at that time, we wouldn't get any benefits at all. Sume reminded solemnly. Don't worry. I will not tell anyone else about this. Chu Feng raised his hand to promise, then chuckled and said, On the other hand, you have really fallen for me to tell me a secret like this right? You, shameless. Who would like you? After Chu Feng said that, Sumei's small face instantly reddened and even her white, soft neck became red. She pushed open the doors and ran out, then pointed at Chu Feng and said, This is your room. If there's nothing, don't run around everywhere. Hee <laughs> hee, this girl really likes having a red face. Seeing the departing back of Sumei, Chu Feng chuckled and said, Idiot. You've gotten really lucky this time. Just at that time, Eggie's pleasant voice rang out and he could hear that she was extremely excited. I know. There's two more evil tombs for exploration, right? Chu Feng smiled. Ha. Huh. You know nothing. How can an evil tomb be as large as to run through half of the Azure province? Eggie said disdainfully. Your meaning is? If these four evil tombs really are one, it would certainly not be evil tombs. They would be emperor tombs. Marshal God Azura. Chapter 132 Roping Trap Emperor Tomb? Chu Feng failed to understand it, but he could still hear the impressiveness of it. In short, an emperor tomb is quite an impressive thing, but you wouldn't understand if I said too much. Just see an emperor tomb as boundless treasure. If there really is an emperor tomb in the Azure province, that guy called King Swanchen would certainly not be as simple as a martial lord. The records of history could very possibly have been slightly wrong. Eggy said. Not only a martial lord? How many more realms are there in the journey of martial cultivation? Chu Feng was incessantly excited and he suddenly felt that he still lacked experience and did not have knowledge about a lot of things. Those realms are too far off from you, so it is useless if I say too much to you. In any case, a huge person appeared in the nine provinces, and it was enough to shake the world. If the tomb is still undamaged, you will need to quickly get strong. After that, kill everyone who knows about this emperor tomb in the nine provinces, to avoid any information leak. 
Actually, that's not enough. You should completely annihilate the nine provinces. Anyway, this information cannot be spread out. Eggy reminded solemnly. What? Annihilate the nine provinces? You want me to kill everyone on this continent? Isn't that a bit too crazy? After hearing those words, Chu Feng felt chills going down his spine. Although he could be heartless while killing enemies, he could not slaughter ordinary citizens and those completely unrelated to him for his own personal goals. What do you know? Emperor tombs are the biggest treasures in the entire world. Not to mention what cultivation I will reach after consuming the source energy of that King Swanchen, you can rely on this emperor tomb and become an invincible person. Don't you want to know what happened with your family? Don't you want to know why your parents left you and did not look after you? There will undoubtedly be reasons within the tomb. From my estimations, I believe that your family were met with a huge catastrophe and were forced to send you here. As for whether your family still exists or not, I have no clue. It is possible that your parents are dead and your family perished. Those who are able to destroy your family and kill your parents are an even greater power. Think about it. If you can't even control the world spirit that your family left for you in your body, how can you face the power that is even stronger than your family? Wake up. This world is not as small as you think. There are countless experts and geniuses are everywhere. Powerful powers have been around for several million years and they stand on the high and steep peak of the world. You are only viewing the sky from the bottom of a well. However, you're very lucky. Lucky that in this deep well, there are boundless treasures. As long as you get these treasures, you will have the ability to go against the experts that are outside of the well. You can even rely on them to avenge your family. Eggy narrated. Don't try to trick me into doing that. On what basis do you say that my family is perished? On what basis do you say that my parents are dead? There is absolutely no evidence, and perhaps they have other reasons. Chu Feng coldly snorted. He was a bit angry because from the bottom of his heart, he really did not hope that anything bad happened to his parents and his family. Okay, I admit. Your family may still exist and your parents living well. However, even if your family still exists, do you have any face to return with your current cultivation? Do you have any face to see your parents? You are too weak right now. In the world of martial cultivation, you are a real ant. They don't even need to use their fingers to squish you to death. They could just randomly fart and your body would be torn with shattered bones. They could just randomly blow and you would disappear like a strand of smoke. Eggie's words were like as sharp as blades as they pierced Chu Feng's ears. She kept on stabbing Chu Feng's pride. Yet, those direct words were what made Chu Feng understand how weak he was. It was true. He did need to become stronger. He needed to become extremely strong. Right now, he was no genius. It was just that the people around him were too mediocre, so he was made into a genius. A true genius should be like King Swanchen, and perhaps there were many geniuses like him outside of the continent of the Nine Provinces. Fine. The treasures within emperor tombs will all belong to me, but I will not kill innocent people, because of my own greed. Chu Feng said gravely. Soft-hearted. Wait until someone really spreads this secret away from the continent. When those real experts all flock over, you will regret it. That's right. I'm still human, so I can't be as cold-blooded as you. If the news of Emperor Tombs really spreads out one day and the treasures get taken by others, I would not have half a word of complaint. Even if I don't rely on these treasures, I can still become strong by myself. Chu Feng was very firm on his decision. Whatever, whatever. I won't argue with you. Even if you tried to slaughter the people on this continent, you wouldn't even have that ability. However, let's depart now. Eggy urged. Leave right now? That's not too good, right? After all, I already promised Su Ro and Su Mei's father to stay a few extra days. Then leave tomorrow. You must leave tomorrow because this cannot be delayed. 
that's fine. After deciding, Chu Feng originally wanted to refine all the spiritual beads he got. However, after some thinking, he was afraid that Su Mei would say that he aimed for short-term benefits so Chu Feng did not refine them. He had the spiritual beads within his hands so he could break through at any time he wished. When the sky became dark, the feast that Su Hen specially prepared for Chu Feng also started. On the table, there were only four people. Su Mei, Su Ro, Chu Feng, and Su Hen. Nevertheless, the table was extremely big and it was filled with sumptuous food and drinks. Chu Feng had never eaten those things before, and with a glance, they made one's appetite increase dramatically. It was just that because of the large-sized table, the four of them sat very scatteredly. Idiot! Why do you only know how to eat meat? Try this. The taste of vegetables are sometimes even more delicious. However, the thing that made people speechless was that Sumei took the initiative to sit near Chu Feng and constantly helped Chu Feng to some food. She even occasionally fed Chu Feng. Of course, Chu Feng did not push it away in the slightest and the two of them helped each other to food and fed each other. That was called sweet. Facing that scene, Su Ro, who already knew her younger sister's heart, chuckled while covering her mouth with her hand. On the other hand, Su Hen had black lines all over his forehead but he could not say anything and he sank into the realm of embarrassment. During the feast, Su Hen took out the reward for the new excellence assembly. Ten Origin Beads Ten Origin Beads were equivalent to ten thousand spiritual beads. It was double the supposed reward for the new excellence assembly and regarding that action, Chu Feng did not decline them because he had no reason to. After all, he knew that the Su family wanted to rope him closer to them. Chu Feng had spirit power and he had the chance to become Zhuge Liuyin's disciple. Sooner or later, he would become a world spiritist and since the Su family also knew about emperor tombs, naturally, they would want Chu Feng to be closer to them so he could serve them to a certain extent. After the feast, Chu Feng returned to his own room. However, just as he returned, someone knocked on the door. A servant came for Chu Feng and said that second lady, Su Ro, seeked him. Chu Feng had quite good impressions towards Su Ro, so naturally, he did not decline. Under the lead of the servant, he entered the palace that Su Ro was living in. Just as Chu Feng entered the palace, two figures walked out from the shadows. One was the lord of the Vermilion Bird City, Su Hen. The other was a thin old man who had white hair. Is everything set up? Looking at the palace of his own daughter, Su Hen spoke. My lord, don't worry. From today on, this Chu Feng will be part of my Su family. The old man strangely smiled and said. 630485 Beft B9 8 C 9 6 2 2 D 6 C 6 9 Chapter 132 Roping Trap Emperor Tomb? Chu Feng failed to understand it, but he could still hear the impressiveness of it. In short, an emperor tomb is quite an impressive thing, but you wouldn't understand if I said too much. Just see an emperor tomb as boundless treasure. If there really is an emperor tomb in the Azure province, that guy called King Swanchen would certainly not be as simple as a martial lord. The records of history could very possibly have been slightly wrong. Egi said. Not only a martial lord? How many more realms are there in the journey of martial cultivation? Chu Feng was incessantly excited and he suddenly felt that he still lacked experience and did not have knowledge about a lot of things. Those realms are too far off from you, so it is useless if I say too much to you. In any case, a huge person appeared in the nine provinces and it was enough to shake the world. If the tomb is still undamaged, you will need to quickly get strong. After that, kill everyone who knows about this emperor tomb in the nine provinces to avoid any information leak. Actually, that's not enough. You should completely annihilate the nine provinces. Anyway, this information cannot be spread out. Eggy reminded solemnly. What? Annihilate the nine provinces? You want me to kill everyone on this continent? Isn't that a bit too crazy? After hearing those words, Chu Feng felt chills going down his spine. 
Although he could be heartless while killing enemies, he could not slaughter ordinary citizens and those completely unrelated to him for his own personal goals. What do you know? Emperor tombs are the biggest treasures in the entire world. Not to mention what cultivation I will reach after consuming the source energy of that King Swanchen, you can rely on this emperor tomb and become an invincible person. Don't you want to know what happened with your family? Don't you want to know why your parents left you and did not look after you? There will undoubtedly be reasons within the tomb. From my estimations, I believe that your family were met with a huge catastrophe and were forced to send you here. As for whether your family still exists or not, I have no clue. It is possible that your parents are dead and your family perished. Those who are able to destroy your family and kill your parents are an even greater power. Think about it. If you can't even control the world spirit that your family left for you in your body, how can you face the power that is even stronger than your family? Wake up. This world is not as small as you think. There are countless experts and geniuses are everywhere. Powerful powers have been around for several million years and they stand on the high and steep peak of the world. You are only viewing the sky from the bottom of a well. However, you're very lucky. Lucky that in this deep well, there are boundless treasures. As long as you get these treasures, you will have the ability to go against the experts that are outside of the well. You can even rely on them to avenge your family. Eggy narrated. Don't try to trick me into doing that. On what basis do you say that my family is perished? On what basis do you say that my parents are dead? There is absolutely no evidence and perhaps they have other reasons. Chu Feng coldly snorted. He was a bit angry because from the bottom of his heart, he really did not hope that anything bad happened to his parents and his family. Okay, I admit. Your family may still exist and your parents living well. However, even if your family still exists, do you have any face to return with your current cultivation? Do you have any face to see your parents? You are too weak right now. In the world of martial cultivation, you are a real ant. They don't even need to use their fingers to squish you to death. They could just randomly fart and your body would be torn with shattered bones. They could just randomly blow and you would disappear like a strand of smoke. Eggie's words were like as sharp as blades as they pierced Chu Feng's ears. She kept on stabbing Chu Feng's pride. Yet, those direct words were what made Chu Feng understand how weak he was. It was true. He did need to become stronger. He needed to become extremely strong. Right now, he was no genius. It was just that the people around him were too mediocre, so he was made into a genius. A true genius should be like King Swanchen, and perhaps there were many geniuses like him outside of the continent of the Nine Provinces. Fine. The treasures within emperor tombs will all belong to me, but I will not kill innocent people because of my own greed. Chu Feng said gravely. Soft-hearted. Wait until someone really spreads this secret away from the continent. When those real experts all flock over, you will regret it. That's right. I'm still human, so I can't be as cold-blooded as you. If the news of Emperor Tombs really spreads out one day and the treasures get taken by others, I would not have half a word of complaint. Even if I don't rely on these treasures, I can still become strong by myself. Chu Feng was very firm on his decision. Whatever, whatever. I won't argue with you. Even if you tried to slaughter the people on this continent, you wouldn't even have that ability. However, let's depart now. Egi urged. Leave right now? That's not too good, right? After all, I already promised Su Ro and Su Mei's father to stay a few extra days. Then leave tomorrow. You must leave tomorrow because this cannot be delayed. That's fine. After deciding, Chu Feng originally wanted to refine all the spiritual beads he got. However, after some thinking, he was afraid that Su Mei would say that he aimed for short-term benefits so Chu Feng did not refine them. He had the spiritual beads within his hands so he could break through at any time he wished. 
When the sky became dark, the feast that Su Hen specially prepared for Chu Feng also started. On the table, there were only four people. Su Mei, Su Ro, Chu Feng, and Su Hen. Nevertheless, the table was extremely big and it was filled with sumptuous food and drinks. Chu Feng had never eaten those things before, and with a glance, they made one's appetite increase dramatically. It was just that because of the large-sized table, the four of them sat very scatteredly. Idiot! Why do you only know how to eat meat? Try this. The taste of vegetables are sometimes even more delicious. However, the thing that made people speechless was that Sumei took the initiative to sit near Chu Feng and constantly helped Chu Feng to some food. She even occasionally fed Chu Feng. Of course, Chu Feng did not push it away in the slightest and the two of them helped each other to food and fed each other. That was called sweet. Facing that scene, Su Ro, who already knew her younger sister's heart, chuckled while covering her mouth with her hand. On the other hand, Su Hen had black lines all over his forehead, but he could not say anything and he sank into the realm of embarrassment. During the feast, Su Hen took out the reward for the new excellence assembly. Ten origin beads. Ten origin beads were equivalent to ten thousand spiritual beads. It was double the supposed reward for the new excellence assembly, and regarding that action, Chu Feng did not decline them because he had no reason to. After all, he knew that the Su family wanted to rope him closer to them. Chu Feng had spirit power and he had the chance to become Zhu Liuyun's disciple. Sooner or later, he would become a world spiritist and since the Su family also knew about emperor tombs, naturally, they would want Chu Feng to be closer to them so he could serve them to a certain extent. After the feast, Chu Feng returned to his own room. However, just as he returned, someone knocked on the door. A servant came for Chu Feng and said that second lady, Su Ro, seeked him. Chu Feng had quite good impressions towards Su Ro, so naturally, he did not decline. Under the lead of the servant, he entered the palace that Su Ro was living in. Just as Chu Feng entered the palace, two figures walked out from the shadows. One was the lord of the vermilion bird city, Su Hen. The other was a thin old man who had white hair. Is everything set up? Looking at the palace of his own daughter, Su Hen spoke. My lord, don't worry. From today on, this Chu Feng will be part of my Su family. The old man strangely smiled and said. Marshal Gadajura. Chapter 133 Poisoned Although the palace that Su Ro was living in was not big, it was very exquisite. The decorations within the palace were quite unique and grand. As fragrance was emitted everywhere in the palace, one could tell that it was the residence of a girl in an instant. Young Master Chu Feng, please drink some tea. This is fragrant tea of the highest quality, and the second lady specially asked me to prepare it for you. The servant served a pot of tea. Thanks. Chu Feng ate quite a bit of food and drank quite a bit of wine in the feast. At that moment, tea was something that Chu Feng needed. The fragrance of the tea was very special and there was an indescribable attraction. Ha, nice tea. Chu Feng finished the cup of tea with one gulp, but he still felt thirsty. So, he raised the entire pot of tea and poured it into his mouth. After finishing the entire pot of tea, he still wished for more as he wiped his mouth and said, Where is the second lady? The second lady said she is waiting for you on the top floor. The servant smiled and said, Oh? I need to go up? Chu Feng felt that it was a bit strange. Why did she invite him yet not personally welcome him? Instead, he needed to go up himself to find her? However, after some more careful thinking, Chu Feng could understand it. Although Chu Feng was a guest in the Su family, at the end, Su Ro was an elder in the Azure Dragon School. No matter if it was on the topic of identity or strength, she was above him, so it was normal for him to look for Su Ro himself. Thinking to that point, Chu Feng started walk up the stairs. The servant smiled strangely closed the door to the palace and silently left that area. 
The following contains explicit content and it can be skipped. The palace had five floors and Chu Feng was slowly walking up. When he walked to the second floor, he felt that something was wrong with his body. His body felt burning hot and he felt waves of evil fire coming from under his stomach. Looking over, a small tent was raised up. Damn. What is happening? Chu Feng was a bit speechless. He quickly straightened his long robe up and covered up his reactions. Or else, if Suaru saw it, he would certainly be labeled as a rogue. Chu Feng continued upwards. However, when he arrived on the third floor, his bottom part swelled more and more. That made Chu Feng very uncomfortable. Although he was at the prime of youth and a pole sticking out was normal, it was the first time that it was so tough. Damn it. This isn't right. Was there some huge supplements in the feast that stimulated my male nature? Chu Feng was aware that something was off and that he was not in his normal state. At that moment, his neck was thick and red. The blood in his body was boiling as if some obscure fire lit his entire body on fire. That obscure fire was the evil fire. It filled the brain with desires and made people want to do things between males and females. If it was not vented out, it would harm the body. It seems that food really cannot be eaten randomly. Chu Feng was a bit anxious and he quickly revolved the spiritual energy within his body to suppress the evil fire within his body. It had to be said that the power of spiritual energy really was wonderful. With that, it really did have some effect. Feeling that his boiling desires were controlled, only then did he dare to continue going upwards. However, when Chu Feng arrived on the fourth level, a wave of fragrance suddenly floated in from the fifth floor. The fragrance seemed to be from a certain flower and it caused people to be lost within it. Chu Feng could not control himself and he was attracted to it. He quickened his footsteps, but just as he walked onto the fifth level, Chu Feng heard water splashing sounds and steam pounced towards his face. At that instant, Chu Feng panicked. He subconsciously thought of a possibility. Although it was the first time that he experienced that scene, it seemed to be a woman's bathing place. Crap. Just at that time, Chu Feng suddenly discovered that his spiritual energy was quickly dissipating. In a flash, he lost all his spiritual energy as if his cultivation was sucked dry by someone. It was like his cultivation gained from the many years all vanished. If it was a normal situation, perhaps Chu Feng would calm himself and find the reason why his cultivation disappeared. However, Chu Feng at that instant completely panicked because the desires suppressed by his spiritual energy madly surged out. It was even several times stronger than before. At that moment, his desire slammed towards his brain and Chu Feng felt that he was going to lose his rationality soon. He subconsciously prepared to leave that place or else he felt that something horrible would happen. Bang clank as he panicked, Chu Feng accidentally knocked a porcelain vase over. Although it did not break, it still made a clear sound. Who? Just at that time, a sharp yet sweet female voice abruptly rang out. It was Su Ro. Don't come over. Chu Feng subconsciously yelled because just by hearing Su Ro's voice, he could not endure it. Who knew what he would do when he saw Su Ro, who was like a fox spirit? Tian, in Chinese legends, fox spirits that transformed into humans were usually extremely beautiful. Chu Feng, it's you? After hearing Chu Feng's voice, Su Ro clearly relaxed and lowered her guard. After water splashing sounds sounded out, light footsteps quickly followed. At that instant, Chu Feng wanted to leave, but when he saw the alluring figure within the steam, he couldn't help but stop his movement. Then, he cast his gaze that was densely covered with evil fire straight towards that beautiful figure. Su Ro stepped out of the steam. She had a white towel covering her body and her seductive body was outlined. Her snow-white shoulders and legs were all revealed. Her wet, long hair scattered along her shoulders and drops of water were on her slender, soft, and smooth skin as they slowly flowed down. Beautiful. Beautiful to the extreme. No matter if it was her fox-like face or her devil-like body, 
with a glance, lust would break out. Chu Feng, it really is you. Why have you come here? Although Su Ro did not expect Chu Feng there, she still charmingly smiled and thousands types of elegance were manifested. Chu Feng's final consciousness collapsed when he heard that soft and sweet voice. Whoosh, if it were others, it would be hard to control themselves when they saw Su Ro like that. No need to mention Chu Feng, who was engulfed by that evil fire. He spread out his arms, stepped with his legs, and with a frog-like jump, he threw himself onto the beautiful Su Ro. What are you doing? Seeing Chu Feng leaping towards her, Su Ro's face instantly lost all color and felt that something was amiss. She wanted to dodge, but she discovered that there was not a single ounce of profound power within her body. Although she could see Chu Feng's actions with her eyes, her body could not react to it. Ah! A sharp cry rang out and Su Ro fell on the ground. She was pushed down by Chu Feng and at that instant, Su Ro's snow-white complexion instantly reddened. Her fox-like, charming big eyes were staring at Chu Feng and her gaze was filled with shock and fear. She could feel that Chu Feng had something that was fiercely jabbing on her body. Facing that situation, naturally, Su Ro could think what was happening. Chu Feng, what are you doing? Get up. As she lost herself from the fear, Su Ro wanted to push Chu Feng away, but it was useless as she could not use any strength. Her soft and smooth hands rubbed Chu Feng's body and it made Chu Feng's desires even stronger. 6304854B98C9622D6C69 Chapter 133 Poisoned Although the palace that Su Ro was living in was not big, it was very exquisite. The decorations within the palace were quite unique and grand. As fragrance was emitted everywhere in the palace, one could tell that it was the residence of a girl in an instant. Young Master Chu Feng, please drink some tea. This is fragrant tea of the highest quality, and the second lady specially asked me to prepare it for you. The servant served a pot of tea. Thanks. Chu Feng ate quite a bit of food and drank quite a bit of wine in the feast. At that moment, tea was something that Chu Feng needed. The fragrance of the tea was very special, and there was an indescribable attraction. Ha, nice tea. Chu Feng finished the cup of tea with one gulp, but he still felt thirsty. So, he raised the entire pot of tea and poured it into his mouth. After finishing the entire pot of tea, he still wished for more as he wiped his mouth and said, Where is the second lady? The second lady said she is waiting for you on the top floor. The servant smiled and said, Oh? I need to go up? Chu Feng felt that it was a bit strange. Why did she invite him yet not personally welcome him? Instead, he needed to go up himself to find her. However, after some more careful thinking, Chu Feng could understand it. Although Chu Feng was a guest in the Su family, at the end, Su Ro was an elder in the Azure Dragon School. No matter if it was on the topic of identity or strength, she was above him, so it was normal for him to look for Su Ro himself. Thinking to that point, Chu Feng started walk up the stairs. The servant smiled strangely, closed the door to the palace, and silently left that area. The following contains explicit content and it can be skipped. The palace had five floors and Chu Feng was slowly walking up. When he walked to the second floor, he felt that something was wrong with his body. His body felt burning hot and he felt waves of evil fire coming from under his stomach. Looking over, a small tent was raised up. Damn. What is happening? Chu Feng was a bit speechless. He quickly straightened his long robe up and covered up his reactions. Or else, if Su Ru saw it, he would certainly be labeled as a rogue. Chu Feng continued upwards. However, when he arrived on the third floor, his bottom part swelled more and more. That made Chu Feng very uncomfortable. Although he was at the prime of youth and a pole sticking out was normal, it was the first time that it was so tough. Damn it. This isn't right. Was there some huge supplements in the feast that stimulated my male nature? Chu Feng was aware that something was off and that he was not in his normal state. 
At that moment, his neck was thick and red. The blood in his body was boiling as if some obscure fire lit his entire body on fire. That obscure fire was the evil fire. It filled the brain with desires and made people want to do things between males and females. If it was not vented out, it would harm the body. It seems that food really cannot be eaten randomly. Chu Feng was a bit anxious and he quickly revolved the spiritual energy within his body to suppress the evil fire within his body. It had to be said that the power of spiritual energy really was wonderful. With that, it really did have some effect. Feeling that his boiling desires were controlled, only then did he dare to continue going upwards. However, when Chu Feng arrived on the fourth level, a wave of fragrance suddenly floated in from the fifth floor. The fragrance seemed to be from a certain flower and it caused people to be lost within it. Chu Feng could not control himself and he was attracted to it. He quickened his footsteps, but just as he walked onto the fifth level, Chu Feng heard water splashing sounds and steam pounced towards his face. At that instant, Chu Feng panicked. He subconsciously thought of a possibility. Although it was the first time that he experienced that scene, it seemed to be a woman's bathing place. Crap. Just at that time, Chu Feng suddenly discovered that his spiritual energy was quickly dissipating. In a flash, he lost all his spiritual energy as if his cultivation was sucked dry by someone. It was like his cultivation gained from the many years all vanished. If it was a normal situation, perhaps Chu Feng would calm himself and find the reason why his cultivation disappeared. However, Chu Feng at that instant completely panicked because the desires suppressed by his spiritual energy madly surged out. It was even several times stronger than before. At that moment, his desire slammed towards his brain and Chu Feng felt that he was going to lose his rationality soon. He subconsciously prepared to leave that place or else he felt that something horrible would happen. Bang clank as he panicked, Chu Feng accidentally knocked a porcelain vase over. Although it did not break, it still made a clear sound. Who? Just at that time, a sharp yet sweet female voice abruptly rang out. It was Su Ro. Don't come over. Chu Feng subconsciously yelled because just by hearing Su Ro's voice, he could not endure it. Who knew what he would do when he saw Su Ro, who was like a fox spirit? Tian, in Chinese legends, fox spirits that transformed into humans were usually extremely beautiful. Chu Feng, it's you? After hearing Chu Feng's voice, Su Ro clearly relaxed and lowered her guard. After water splashing sounds sounded out, light footsteps quickly followed. At that instant, Chu Feng wanted to leave, but when he saw the alluring figure within the steam, he couldn't help but stop his movement. Then, he cast his gaze that was densely covered with evil fire straight towards that beautiful figure. Su Ro stepped out of the steam. She had a white towel covering her body and her seductive body was outlined. Her snow-white shoulders and legs were all revealed. Her wet, long hair scattered along her shoulders and drops of water were on her slender, soft, and smooth skin as they slowly flowed down. Beautiful. Beautiful to the extreme. No matter if it was her fox-like face or her devil-like body, with a glance, lust would break out. Chu Feng, it really is you. Why have you come here? Although Su Ro did not expect Chu Feng there, she still charmingly smiled and thousands types of elegance were manifested. Chu Feng's final consciousness collapsed when he heard that soft and sweet voice. Whoosh if it were others, it would be hard to control themselves when they saw Su Ro like that. No need to mention Chu Feng who was engulfed by that evil fire. He spread out his arms, stepped with his legs, and with a frog-like jump, he threw himself onto the beautiful Su Ro. What are you doing? Seeing Chu Feng leaping towards her, Su Ro's face instantly lost all color and felt that something was amiss. She wanted to dodge, but she discovered that there was not a single ounce of profound power within her body. Although she could see Chu Feng's actions with her eyes, her body could not react to it. Ah! A sharp cry rang out and Su Ro fell on the ground. She was pushed down by Chu Feng and at that instant, 
Sue Rose's snow-white complexion instantly reddened. Her fox-like, charming big eyes were staring at Chu Fong and her gaze was filled with shock and fear. She could feel that Chu Fong had something that was fiercely jabbing on her body. Facing that situation, naturally, Su Ro could think what was happening. Chu Fong, what are you doing? Get up. As she lost herself from the fear, Su Ro wanted to push Chu Fong away, but it was useless as she could not use any strength. Her soft and smooth hands rubbed Chu Feng's body, and it made Chu Feng's desires even stronger. Martial God Azura Chapter 134 Hungry Wolf Pouncing on the White Rabbit Sex Scene Continued Chu Feng's eyes, that were consumed by desire, glared like a tiger at Su Ro's body. He was like a hungry wolf that had a rumbling stomach and drooled for a long time while looking at a little white rabbit. Two peaks appeared in Chu Feng's eyes. Perhaps because of the overfierce actions before, Su Ro's towel was pulled down a bit and a piece of Snow White instantly appeared. As he looked, Chu Feng swallowed some saliva. Looking up, it was the white and tender neck and her delicate, perfect face. Su Ro's attractive eyes were lifelessly looking at him. Her eyes were a bit moist and she looked quite pitiful. Her long eyebrows faintly trembled and fear was evident. Her face was scarlet red like an additive that let Chu Feng lose all reason. Su Ro's closed soft and red lips emitted endless attractiveness. Chu Feng, have you gone insane? Let me go, mm. -hmm. Suddenly, Chu Feng opened his mouth and fiercely bit down. Su Ro was talking to Chu Feng and being caught off guard, she felt that her red lips were sealed shut. Mm -hmm. It was the first time in her life that Su Ro experienced that. She never felt that before, yet it had a unique feeling. Su Ro's body instantly went limp and lost all ability to resist. She powerlessly laid on the ground. At the same time that Chu Feng was kissing Su Ro, his hands demonically flew everywhere and ripped the towel on Su Ro's body into pieces. Her perfect body was shown in front of him while being semi covered. At that instant, it wasn't that Su Ro gave up on resisting, it just that she had no strength. She could only let Chu Feng do what he wished on her body and let him madly take everything. Damn it! Who did this to us? Su Ro already saw the inklings and knew that the current Chu Feng lost all reason. He was clearly being influenced by drugs and her cultivation was restricted as well. Someone should have done something without anyone knowing. However, not ordinary people could do that to her within her vermilion bird city. The smell? At that moment, Su Ro noticed that there was a strange fragrance in the bathroom. That scent was quite familiar, and from that, she understood. Yet, she felt that it was hard to believe. It was a special type of drug that could restrict one's cultivation. It was an extremely precious thing and it was a treasure that her father, Su Hen, collected. Its father? Why did he do this? At that instant, Su Ro was completely baffled. She could not think of the reason why her own father would harm her, yet that thing really did belong to him. Other than her father, there was no one else that had it within the Su family. Also, other than her father, there was no one else that could put that special type of drug into her bathroom. Ah. Uh. However, at that moment, Su Ro's face changed greatly. She painfully screeched because she felt that a foreign object intruded into her body and tore her most precious thing. Drops of blood slowly flowed out. Chu Feng, you bastard. Clear your head. Su Ro madly struggled and wanted to push Chu Feng away. But, Chu Feng, who was on her body was like a mountain and she could not move him in any way. She could only let Chu Feng, who had bloodshot eyes and was panting, roughly press her down. She was completely helpless. Mm. Chu Feng massaged his aching brain and gradually opened his eyes. As he was in a daze, there was a smile on the corner of his mouth because he remembered that he had a very beautiful dream. So beautiful that he was not even willing to wake up from it. Within the dream, he did a very comfortable thing. Although he forgot about the details and people, it was very beautiful and hard to forget. Su Ro 
But when Chu Feng saw Su Ro, who was completely bare naked next to him and the bloodstain on the ground, he was instantly disarrayed. Associating back to the fragments of memory, Chu Feng thought of an inconceivable thing. It was that he forced Su Mei's elder sister, the second lady of the Su family, Su Ro, down. My gods, why did I do such a thing? Chu Feng was completely dumbfounded and he did not know what to do. No need to blame yourself. This was not your fault. Su Rose had a very cold expression and her voice was very calm. It seemed that she already woke up a long time ago and organized her own emotions. Su Ro stood up and her pure white, perfect body appeared in front of Chu Feng's eyes again. This, seeing that, Chu Feng subconsciously turned his head away and didn't dare to look. No need to put up an act. You've already seen enough last night. Su Ro grinded her teeth and bit her lower lip. She was really furious because not only did Chu Feng look all over her body last night, he even took away her most precious chastity. Although she knew that Chu Feng's actions yesterday were not done voluntarily, when she saw Chu Feng currently having such upright behavior and had such an ashamed expression, Su Ro was still extremely angry. From Su Ro's words, Chu Feng thought about it, and he agreed. As a man, one should be able to dare to act courageously and dare to take responsibility. Since it already happened, how could he escape his responsibility? So, he turned his already turned head back and looked at Su Ro's so-called perfect body. Although that glance seemed insignificant, Chu Feng instantly reacted to it. It wasn't that Chu Feng had uncontrollable lust, it was just in front of such a beautiful woman, those who were male would have a reaction. Not to mention that Chu Feng monopolized the sight in front of him. Su Ro didn't pay attention to Chu Feng either. She wore her pink dudu in front of him and also her snow-white Chong Sam. However, when she turned her head and saw an upright object, her expression couldn't help but change as she coldly reprimanded. My cultivation has already returned. If you dare to have any evil thoughts towards me, I will break you. I will take responsibility. Chu Feng was not afraid and instead, he solemnly vowed. I don't need you to take responsibility, and I hope that you don't spread this out. Also, don't turn your back on little May. Su Ro gnashed her teeth and said the last few words. Don't worry. I won't betray little May, but I won't betray you either. I will marry you two sisters. Chu Feng said extremely seriously. You, after hearing Chu Feng's words, Su Ro's little face paled from anger and after that, she fiercely shot Chu Feng a glance and said, you really are too greedy. After saying those words, Su Ro quickly walked out of the bathroom. However, after turning the corner, she stopped and leaned against the wall. She muttered to herself, strange. Why am I so angry? What is that sour feeling in my heart? 630485BFB98C962D6C69 Chapter 134 Hungry Wolf Pouncing on the White Rabbit Sex scene continued. Chu Feng's eyes, that were consumed by desire, glared like a tiger at Su Ro's body. He was like a hungry wolf that had a rumbling stomach and drooled for a long time while looking at a little white rabbit. Two peaks appeared in Chu Feng eyes. Perhaps because of the overfierce actions before, Su Ro's towel was pulled down a bit and a piece of Snow White instantly appeared. As he looked, Chu Feng swallowed some saliva. Looking up, it was the white and tender neck and her delicate, perfect face. Su Ro's attractive eyes were lifelessly looking at him. Her eyes were a bit moist and she looked quite pitiful. Her long eyebrows faintly trembled and fear was evident. Her face was scarlet red like an additive that let Chu Feng lose all reason. Su Ro's closed soft and red lips emitted endless attractiveness. Chu Feng, have you gone insane? Let me go, mm. Suddenly, Chu Feng opened his mouth and fiercely bit down. Su Ro was talking to Chu Feng and being caught off guard, she felt that her red lips were sealed shut. Mm. It was the first time in her life that Su Ro experienced that. She never felt that before, yet it had a unique feeling. 
Su Ro's body instantly went limp and lost all ability to resist. She powerlessly laid on the ground. At the same time that Chu Feng was kissing Su Ro, his hands demonically flew everywhere and ripped the towel on Su Ro's body into pieces. Her perfect body was shown in front of him while being semi-covered. At that instant, it wasn't that Su Ro gave up on resisting, it just that she had no strength. She could only let Chu Feng do what he wished on her body and let him madly take everything. Damn it! Who did this to us? Su Ro already saw the inklings and knew that the current Chu Feng lost all reason. He was clearly being influenced by drugs and her cultivation was restricted as well. Someone should have done something without anyone knowing. However, not ordinary people could do that to her within her vermilion bird city. The smell? At that moment, Su Ro noticed that there was a strange fragrance in the bathroom. That scent was quite familiar, and from that, she understood. Yet, she felt that it was hard to believe. It was a special type of drug that could restrict one's cultivation. It was an extremely precious thing, and it was a treasure that her father, Su Hen, collected. Its father? Why did he do this? At that instant, Su Ro was completely baffled. She could not think of the reason why her own father would harm her, yet that thing really did belong to him. Other than her father, there was no one else that had it within the Su family. Also, other than her father, there was no one else that could put that special type of drug into her bathroom. Ah. However, at that moment, Su Ro's face changed greatly. She painfully screeched because she felt that a foreign object intruded into her body and tore her most precious thing. Drops of blood slowly flowed out. Chu Feng, you bastard. Clear your head. Su Ro madly struggled and wanted to push Chu Feng away. But Chu Feng, who was on her body, was like a mountain and she could not move him in any way. She could only let Chu Feng, who had bloodshot eyes and was panting, roughly press her down. She was completely helpless. Mm. Chu Feng massaged his aching brain and gradually opened his eyes. As he was in a daze, there was a smile on the corner of his mouth because he remembered that he had a very beautiful dream. So beautiful that he was not even willing to wake up from it. Within the dream, he did a very comfortable thing. Although he forgot about the details and people, it was very beautiful and hard to forget. Su Ro. But when Chu Feng saw Su Ro, who was completely bare naked next to him and the blood stain on the ground, he was instantly disarrayed. Associating back to the fragments of memory, Chu Feng thought of an inconceivable thing. It was that he forced Su Mei's elder sister, the second lady of the Su family, Su Ro, down. My gods, why did I do such a thing? Chu Feng was completely dumbfounded and he did not know what to do. No need to blame yourself. This was not your fault. Sue Rose had a very cold expression and her voice was very calm. It seemed that she already woke up a long time ago and organized her own emotions. Sue Rose stood up and her pure white, perfect body appeared in front of Chu Feng's eyes again. This, seeing that, Chu Feng subconsciously turned his head away and didn't dare to look. No need to put up an act. You've already seen enough last night. Su Ro grinded her teeth and bit her lower lip. She was really furious because not only did Chu Feng look all over her body last night, he even took away her most precious chastity. Although she knew that Chu Feng's actions yesterday were not done voluntarily, when she saw Chu Feng currently having such upright behavior and had such an ashamed expression, Su Ro was still extremely angry. From Su Ro's words, Chu Feng thought about it and he agreed. As a man, one should be able to dare to act courageously and dare to take responsibility. Since it already happened, how could he escape his responsibility? So, he turned his already turned head back and looked at Su Ro's so-called perfect body. Although that glance seemed insignificant, Chu Feng instantly reacted to it. It wasn't that Chu Feng had uncontrollable lust, it was just in front of such a beautiful woman, those who were male would have a reaction. Not to mention that Chu Feng monopolized the sight in front of him. Su Ro didn't pay attention to Chu Feng either. 
she wore her pink dudu in front of him and also her snow-white chong sam. However, when she turned her head and saw an upright object, her expression couldn't help but change as she coldly reprimanded. My cultivation has already returned. If you dare to have any evil thoughts towards me, I will break you. I will take responsibility. Chu Feng was not afraid and instead, he solemnly vowed. I don't need you to take responsibility, and I hope that you don't spread this out. Also, don't turn your back on little Mei. Su Ro gnashed her teeth and said the last few words. Don't worry. I won't betray little Mei, but I won't betray you either. I will marry you two sisters. Chu Feng said extremely seriously. You, after hearing Chu Feng's words, Su Ro's little face paled from anger and after that, she fiercely shot Chu Feng a glance and said, you really are too greedy. After saying those words, Su Ro quickly walked out of the bathroom. However, after turning the corner, she stopped and leaned against the wall. She muttered to herself, strange. Why am I so angry? What is that sour feeling in my heart? Marshal got Azura. Chapter 135 I want both sisters Su Ro did not understand and felt unfathomably strange. Although her chastity was taken away by Chu Feng just like that and she was extremely angry, when Chu Feng said that he would marry both her and Su Mei, what was that sour feeling? Was it that she fell for Chu Feng? But how was that possible? Chu Feng was her own sister's lover. How could she fall for him? The current Su Ro was tangled up and for the first time, she discovered that she did not understand herself. At that moment, Chu Feng walked out as well. He wore his clothes, entirely new, because the clothing he wore last night was already ripped to shreds by him. Will this be kept secret or open to the public? Chu Feng spoke and asked. What are you thinking about? How can this be publicized? If it is, how will little may look at you? How will little may look at me? Su Ro was very nervous. I'll listen to what you say right now since it will be made public sooner or later. Chu Feng seemed rather calm. What is your meaning? Su Ro's willow-like eyebrows slanted inwards and she was nervous that Chu Feng would stir something up. It's nothing. I'm just saying that you're mine, sooner or later. The corner of Chu Feng's mouth slightly raised and he revealed an unruly evil smile as though everything that happened last night did not burden him at all. Rather, it was like he indulged in reminiscence. Su Ro viciously shot a glance at Chu Feng, then she turned her head around and did not bother with Chu Feng anymore. With a strangely emphasized tone, she said to drive him away, quickly leave. Take advantage of the unlit sky and don't let anyone know that you passed the night at my place. Mm -hmm. I was planning to leave anyway. Speak to little May and your father on behalf of me. As Chu Feng spoke, he prepared to walk down the stairs. Wait. Su Ro's expression changed greatly as she questioned closely, you said that you're leaving the Vermilion Bird City? That's right. Chu Feng nodded. How can you be like this? We did all this without understanding why, yet you don't even bother to figure out what happened and leave just like that. Su Ro's gaze flickered and her fury was increased because she felt that Chu Feng was too irresponsible. After all, what he took away last night was her body. Figure out what happened? Last night, your servant from your residence invited me over. She said that there was something you needed me for and said that you even specially prepared a pot of tea for me. After drinking that tea, I became how I was last night. Also, there was a fragrance in the bathroom. That fragrance was extremely strange and it could restrain one's cultivation and make them completely powerless. Last night, you didn't even have enough strength to hold a chicken, so I'm sure that it was caused by that fragrance. Who do you think? within your own vermilion bird city, is able to command your servant to betray you, and also take out such strong drugs? Chu Feng asked tranquilly. You, at that instant, Su Ro was dumbfounded. She never would have thought that Chu Feng could analyze everything so quickly and determine who the person behind the scenes was. That calm judgmental power and exceptional observation skills was really quite unbelievable. 
Looking at your expression, it seems that you know who that person is as well. As for that person's goal, you and I mutually understand. I don't blame him, rather, I want to give him my gratitude. If he didn't do that, perhaps I would only marry his little daughter. But right now, I'll take both of his daughters. Chu Feng smiled and walked down the building. For what reason do you say that? How do you know that I will marry you? Su Ro interrogated. I cannot be sure that you will marry me, but you are already mine. You better not like another person or else I'll kill him. No matter what, you cannot deny that from today on, you are mine. You and Little Maid both are. You two sisters better not think of going anywhere. Chu Feng's attitude was resolute and directly overbearing. After saying those words, he didn't even look at what expression Su Ro had and quickly left. Su Ro stood there blankly without knowing what to do. Her, who was steadily maturing, got muddled up for the first time. Before Chu Feng left for long, Su Han walked in. When he arrived on the fifth floor, he saw Su Ro. He had an apologetic face, but he did not say anything. He walked into the bathroom, and after seeing the bloodstain on the ground, he sighed, Daughter, I am sorry for wronging you. Su Ro was also very calm as she asked, Why did you need to do this? Sigh. The strength of the Shangguan family cannot be underestimated. If Little Mei and Shang Wanya's marriage was forcefully cancelled, the Shangguan family would certainly feel resentful. If he revolts against my Su family, even if we win, we will be greatly damaged and this vermilion bird city will be in a crisis. Little Mei has fallen in love for that Chu Feng and everyone can see that. If it was another person, I could forcefully cut off their relationship. However, that Chu Feng just so happens to be a genius and when he grows up in the future, his power cannot be obstructed. My Su family cannot offend him, so I can only rope him in with us. So, you had be wronged. A relationship happened between you and him, so naturally, he would feel guilt in his heart and I believe he will not go for little May anymore. From what I can see, Chu Feng does not seem to be a person who doesn't take responsibility. So, in the future, even if he doesn't work for my Su family, he will certainly protect us. Not for anyone else, but just for you, he would do all that. Su Hen did not hide anything, and he explained everything in detail. After hearing Su Hen's words, Su Ro suddenly smiled. Her smile was abnormally strange, and Su Hen, who looked at it had his hair stand up, My lord father, you are indeed correct. Chu Feng really is a responsible person, so you better not give little Mei to that Shang Guanya. Or else, not only will he exterminate the Shangguan family, he will even exterminate my Su family and leave only me and little Mei, the two of us, behind. What do you mean? Will Chu Feng still think about little Mei after doing that to you? Exterminate my Su family? Chu Feng would dare to exterminate the family of his lover? Wouldn't he be afraid of the ridicule of the world? Su Hen's face changed greatly and he was clearly slightly anxious because he could tell that Su Ro did not seem to be joking. My lord father, if you had to blame something, you can only blame your lack of understanding towards Chu Feng. He does not live for the world, he lives for himself and those who he care about. Other people in his eyes can be useful or they can be useless. It would be in vain to hold that against him. After speaking those words, Su Ro turned around and walked down. Although her expression was calm, her own father sold her out for his family. How could she not be furious? That fury could very possibly last an entire life. Seeing Su Ro, who left the palace and headed towards the outside of the Vermilion Bird City, Su Hens had an extremely complex expression on his face. After a good while, he said in a low voice, could it be that I really made a mistake? 630485 Beft B9 8C 9622 D6 C69 Chapter 135 I Want Both Sisters Su Ro did not understand and felt unfathomably strange. Although her chastity was taken away by Chu Feng just like that and she was extremely angry, when Chu Feng said that he would marry both her and Su Mei, what was that sour feeling? Was it that she fell for Chu Feng? But how was that possible? 
Chu Feng was her own sister's lover. How could she fall for him? The current Su Ro was tangled up and for the first time, she discovered that she did not understand herself. At that moment, Chu Feng walked out as well. He wore his clothes, entirely new, because the clothing he wore last night was already ripped to shreds by him. Will this be kept secret or open to the public? Chu Feng spoke and asked. What are you thinking about? How can this be publicized? If it is, how a little may look at you? How a little may look at me? Su Ro was very nervous. I'll listen to what you say right now since it will be made public sooner or later. Chu Feng seemed rather calm. What is your meaning? Su Ro's willow-like eyebrows slanted inwards and she was nervous that Chu Feng would stir something up. It's nothing. I'm just saying that you're mine, sooner or later. The corner of Chu Feng's mouth slightly raised and he revealed an unruly evil smile as though everything that happened last night did not burden him at all. Rather, it was like he indulged in reminiscence. Su Ro viciously shot a glance at Chu Feng, then she turned her head around and did not bother with Chu Feng anymore. With a strangely emphasized tone, she said to drive him away, quickly leave. Take advantage of the unlit sky and don't let anyone know that you passed the night at my place. Mm -hmm. I was planning to leave anyway. Speak to little May and your father on behalf of me. As Chu Feng spoke, he prepared to walk down the stairs. Wait. Su Ro's expression changed greatly as she questioned closely, you said that you're leaving the Vermilion Bird City? That's right. Chu Feng nodded. How can you be like this? We did all this without understanding why, yet you don't even bother to figure out what happened and leave just like that. Su Ro's gaze flickered and her fury was increased because she felt that Chu Feng was too irresponsible. After all, what he took away last night was her body. Figure out what happened? Last night, your servant from your residence invited me over. She said that there was something you needed me for and said that you even specially prepared a pot of tea for me. After drinking that tea, I became how I was last night. Also, there was a fragrance in the bathroom. That fragrance was extremely strange and it could restrain one's cultivation and make them completely powerless. Last night, you didn't even have enough strength to hold a chicken, so I'm sure that it was caused by that fragrance. Who do you think, within your own vermilion bird city, is able to command your servant to betray you, and also take out such strong drugs? Chu Feng asked tranquilly. You, at that instant, Su Ro was dumbfounded. She never would have thought that Chu Feng could analyze everything so quickly and determine who the person behind the scenes was. That calm judgmental power and exceptional observation skills was really quite unbelievable. Looking at your expression, it seems that you know who that person is as well. As for that person's goal, you and I mutually understand. I don't blame him, rather, I want to give him my gratitude. If he didn't do that, perhaps I would only marry his little daughter. But right now, I'll take both of his daughters. Chu Feng smiled and walked down the building. For what reason do you say that? How do you know that I will marry you? Su Ro interrogated. I cannot be sure that you will marry me, but you are already mine. You better not like another person or else I'll kill him. No matter what, you cannot deny that from today on, you are mine. You and Little Maid both are. You two sisters better not think of going anywhere. Chu Feng's attitude was resolute and directly overbearing. After saying those words, he didn't even look at what expression Su Ro had and quickly left. Su Ro stood there blankly without knowing what to do. Her, who was steadily maturing, got muddled up for the first time. Before Chu Feng left for long, Su Han walked in. When he arrived on the fifth floor, he saw Su Ro. He had an apologetic face, but he did not say anything. He walked into the bathroom, and after seeing the blood stain on the ground, he sighed, Daughter, I am sorry for wronging you. Su Ro was also very calm as she asked, Why did you need to do this? Sigh. The strength of the Shangguan family cannot be underestimated. If little Mei and Shangguanya's marriage was forcefully cancelled,
the Shangguan family would certainly feel resentful. If he revolts against my Sioux family, even if we win, we will be greatly damaged and this vermilion bird city will be in a crisis. Little May has fallen in love for that Chu Fong and everyone can see that. If it was another person, I could forcefully cut off their relationship. However, that Chu Fong just so happens to be a genius and when he grows up in the future, his power cannot be obstructed. My Sioux family cannot offend him, so I can only rope him in with us. So, you had be wronged. A relationship happened between you and him, so naturally, he would feel guilt in his heart and I believe he will not go for Little May anymore. From what I can see, Chu Fong does not seem to be a person who doesn't take responsibility. So, in the future, even if he doesn't work for my Sioux family, he will certainly protect us. Not for anyone else, but just for you, he would do all that. Su Hen did not hide anything, and he explained everything in detail. After hearing Su Hen's words, Su Ro suddenly smiled. Her smile was abnormally strange, and Su Hen, who looked at it, had his hair stand up. My lord father, you are indeed correct. Chu Fo really is a responsible person, so you better not give little Mei to that Shangguanya. Or else, not only will he exterminate the Shangguan family, he will even exterminate my Su family and leave only me and little Mei, the two of us, behind. What do you mean? Will Chu Fong still think about little Mei after doing that to you? Exterminate my Su family? Chu Fong would dare to exterminate the family of his lover? Wouldn't he be afraid of the ridicule of the world? Su Hen's face changed greatly, and he was clearly slightly anxious, because he could tell that Su Ro did not seem to be joking. My lord father, if you had to blame something, you can only blame your lack of understanding towards Chu Fong. He does not live for the world, he lives for himself and those who he care about. Other people in his eyes can be useful, or they can be useless. It would be in vain to hold that against him. After speaking those words, Su Ro turned around and walked down. Although her expression was calm, her own father sold her out for his family. How could she not be furious? That fury could very possibly last an entire life. Seeing Su Ro, who left the palace and headed towards the outside of the Vermilion Bird City, Su Hens had an extremely complex expression on his face. After a good while, he said in a low voice, could it be that I really made a mistake? 